welcome to Let's Play Murray. Murray, as far as I can tell, was made by Daniel Ramar, another of his works. This one is not, however, on his website, because I believe he made this one not as a personal project, which, of course, all of the games on his website are free to play. This one is actually for sale, and I would believe was made under the Ludosity, which is the company Daniel Ramar now works for, with a group of friends, including really Joel being one of them. And having been made under the Ludosity banner, um, despite being one of Daniel Ramar's games, it's actually for sale, and on Steam, and it's just a couple bucks, it's really pretty cheap. Um, Murray was made with old DOS games in mind, and in that vein, he replicated what old DOS games like Duke Nukem, the first Duke Nukem, were capable of to the letter. Um, the color palettes, the sounds, the frame rate, you name it. Um, except for aspect ratio, which I thought was a little odd. But, with that said, um... This game was made a little bit earlier than I thought. For whatever reason, I was expecting this game, or I thought this game was made very recently, but no, back in 2013. So, um, one thing to mention about Murray. The frame rate is, by default, 16. That's what the DOS games were capable of. Ever seen one of those old games run? It's painful. Um, just for the sake of recording and enjoyment of playing, I've upped it to a fantastic 32 for smooth movement. But otherwise, let's get started. So the game is divided up into four different episodes, so to say. Um, there is no saving. Very similar to the many... I won't say all, many DOS games. There was no, there was no um, saving in-game, quick saves, anything of the sort. It plays a little more like an arcade game, but there are four episodes. Uh, when you beat one episode, you can start the next one. You can play them in any order whenever you want to, but they do go chronologically. So you probably want to beat that first one before you start the second one. Kind of like the Doom episodes, actually, now that I think about it. Where, like, you start the second episode, doesn't matter what power-ups or anything you got in the first one, you start the second one, that's where you start. Um, difficulty, as far as I can tell, only changes the various drops around the room, or around the levels. Um, on lower difficulties, there are simply more health and one-ups around, whereas on harder difficulties, they are replaced with points. On top of a score multiplier, so if you want that high score, man, I'm going to be playing on normal because I'm not insane. Um, also, sound-wise, not only is he using a sound chip, I guess, or sound replication of what the DOS software was capable of, but similar to what the DOS, uh, DOS games were capable of, only one sound can play at a time. means this music is entirely one sound played one after the other. And once we get in-game, there's no background music. Kojo! Because he put on a suit, like, hey, we made this cool suit. I'm gonna put it on. We're gonna kill you. And here we are. So, if you like old DOS games, if you have an amount of nostalgia for them, this is going to be your cup of tea. Um, otherwise, it may be a little painfully old. Like, there's... your jump is strictly up and down, there's no, uh, velocity or anything on it. Uh, you can move, you can shoot, 
and you can dock. Have to destroy the cores so you can open some barriers ladder, um, scattered throughout the various levels. And you gotta shoot guys who explode. Look at them exploding, gotta get them points too. Now when you get a new power-up, because you can see the various weapons down there in the lower right, Uh. When you get a new power-up, you automatically equip it. Um, it kind of goes to how old the game is. Like, there's the exit right there. You can actually speedrun through these levels pretty quickly if you don't want score or anything. I'm gonna make an attempt to look around and get score and stuff. And power-ups. I mean, look at this. Get some guns. But you are automatically equipped with the most powerful weapon you have, which not only goes to making it slightly, giving it that slightly older feel, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna get a one up. But Ramar was mentioning that the reason he went with this system, where you just automatically equip the most powerful weapon, is he found players that never you or players would either never t like forget they have the more powerful weapon. They'd save them. Oh, you get that computer screen, it's the most points. He said for the most part, players would either forget they had them and never change, or they would save them forever and then never actually use them. So he said auto-equipping them, um, as long as he designed with that in mind, and made, some th made the game not difficult enough that you absolutely needed them, Um, of note, we are not Kojo, the character introduced in the beginning. We are indeed someone else. We don't know who yet. We got that odd, Odwoa, or some such, I forget how it was spelled. So the game was uh, kind of designed without the need for that strongest weapon all the time. Like, you can kind of get by with the weaker weapons when the need arises. Oh, that red guy shoots at you. And so with that design in mind, um, making it so you just always ha use the most powerful weapon available, um, added a lot of variety to the gameplay because you were changing weapons constantly. Uh, this thing lets you go up and down if you press up and down. I'm not entirely sure need for it is. Uh, you can also moonwalk if you're shooting. If you hold down the shoot button and press the direction you're not facing, you'll move backwards and continue shooting in that direction. So we gotta find a gate somewhere. So enemies are generally color-coded as to who is the stronger and weaker enemies. Green enemies are going to be the weakest. Blue is going to be in the mid middle, and red is going to be the strongest. And I believe he also said that in all of the levels in this game, there is pretty much a new level. There's pretty much a new enemy introduced in almost every level. Sometimes it may just be a variation on an existing enemy. Okay, so we never went up here, where the core is. Eat it, core! Ah, there we go. Extra life! Um, he's also mentioned that the story in the game is kind of intentionally a little, um... What's the word? Silly? Like, if you want to take it seriously, you can, but if you don't want to take it seriously, you don't have to, and it's great. Like, he tried to shoot for that middle ground. And there's the exit. Now, I don't... So last time I came here, um, when I played through this previously, when I got here, I swear I saw a 
big dude in that lower left corner. Like, big, dark guy. Looked like a... Looked like a Kamado or something. And he just walked off the side of the screen. And I ran down there and he's gone. I don't know what I saw. Maybe I was seeing things. A lot of guys in there. And we got robots. Still getting more of that spread. Um, you can jump on enemies, though that was added mostly as... Mostly as a means to deal with if you, like, fall on an enemy, you're not stuck in their hitbox taking constant damage. Okay, so we got an elevator there going up. And this over here. Yeah, getting them points. I actually cannot speak on the seriousness of the story yet. I do know the story does... it goes somewhere. It's something to actually pay attention to. So we got the exit over there, but um, there's stuff to collect, so I'm gonna go this way. Finally, I can use my 79 Rapid. How do you get up there? Oh, you get up over here. So many points! Add an extra life. So a lot of the green enemies only take like one hit, but not all of them. These robots take two, I believe. Oh, I'm getting something. Ah, oh, I'm here. Gotta refill my rapid. Okay, I think we're more or less done here. I'm not shooting for 100%, and, um, because there's a lot of stuff that's like, I don't know, just really well hidden. But the game has a number... Ooh, we actually got 100%. Like, it says, exit that way, and I'm like, oh, I fudged that noise, I'm going this way. Ah. So I don't know who that guy is. I don't know what his story is, or what his deal is. But, uh, he's kind of mean, and he takes a lot of hits. Some kind of ninja. I shot him enough that he ran away. You can kill him. There he is. Get out of the shadows. Come down here where I can fight you. Ow. <laughs> I jumped into the spikes. Yeah, I got him. We're getting extra life for our troubles. So that ninja guy kind of wrecks. Um, I sort of knew what I was in for this time, so I didn't just flail about like a loon. Wah! I got shot in my foot! So I didn't just flail about like a loon, but, um... He didn't. He did a number on me my first run through. There's plenty of health around, though, so it's not that big a deal. I'm told, I believe, that the easier difficult. Yeah. I'm told that um, this first act is relatively easy, even on, 
like the hardest difficulties. I guess that's it. We blew up a core. Hey, so we blew up a core so we can go to the exit. What's down here? Oh, nothing. That's it. Ah, wait. No, I'm going somewhere. Ooh. I found a cell. I don't know what these cells are. I don't know what they do. I don't know how many to collect. What's going on with them? I found one. Oh. I'm just going to shoot for playing and beating the game. Probably going to get some kind of bad ending. Because I didn't find all the cells. Hey, I don't know. I don't know about things. 74%. There must... There's a secret somewhere. It's probably, like, right on the other side of the exit door. Oh, this isn't intimidating at all. Infinite Rapid! Now, for the remainder of this act, I guess. Uh, for the remainder of stage one, I have infinite rapid, so when I run out of my spread, I will get uh, the spread, the MK, MKV. Um, I only have infinite rapid, and though nice, it's really only the best up in... Oh! Laser! So that's what you use the cells for. That's neat, so I know if I see one of those doors, it's done fudged up. Oh no. So laser is really powerful, and when it hits, the lasers bounce. Man, they even take out these blue things in one shot. I'll hit you eventually! Even the red ones, man! Get wrecked! Okay, so each level is um, made up of five stages, the fifth of which is always a boss. I'll be trying to do a full level per video, but we'll see how that works, because I get the feeling these get longer and longer. Odd war. Okay, we've got at least three names now. And we still don't know what's going on. And we see that our protagonist... ...is actually a somewhat older lady. A mother, in fact. Until next time everyone when we move on to level two and perhaps we will see just what in the world is going on because mars disappeared and now earth has been wrecked and i'm in a suit